Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Your word is the truth, and we receive it written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it. We praise you for all that you're bringing forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you on the subject of righteousness. We've talked about understanding God's righteousness, that God is a righteous God, and His way is a way of righteousness. We've talked about how we become righteous, as we saw scriptures in the Old Testament and the New Testament, showing how a righteous person acts, walks, the things that he does. And God wants us to be the ones who are going to be righteous before the Lord. As we walk in those ways, we looked this morning, we saw how important it was for us to realize that it's mandatory for us to be righteous in order to enter into all that God has for us, including to get that crown of righteousness that is laid up for every single one of us. And for us to be a part of those, the real church, the ones of the just righteous men whose hearts are made perfect before the Lord. Well, tonight we're going to talk about results and rewards of righteousness. As you order your life and you walk in the way of righteousness, then you're going to see great results and great rewards that are going to come forth. In Genesis chapter 7, in verse 1, the Lord said to Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. If God sees you righteous, then you're going to be, you could be in the same position. What was this? He escaped the judgment that came. He came into the ark of safety. He was protected from the judgment. You must understand that before the judgment comes to the world, the Bible says that judgment's going to come to the church, the house of God, first. And the righteous, the righteous are to be the ones that are going to be safe in the ark of God. God wants you to escape judgment. You will escape any judgments that will come, regardless of what the situation is, if you are righteous before the Lord. Over in Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Here it's speaking about Abraham. He did what God expected him to do. And God said, For I know him, <clears throat> that he will command his children and his household after him. God wants you to command your children and your household after the way of the word of God. It is essential that you put the word first place in your life. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice, to do what is righteous and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him, Notice all the things that God spoke about Abraham that he wanted to bring upon him. It wasn't automatic. He had to meet the conditions first. He had to command his children and household after the way of the Lord and to keep the way of the Lord and do what was right in his sight so that the Lord then could bring upon Abraham that which he's spoken to him. It's the same for you. If you will do the things that God says and you will be righteous before him, then God will be able to bring the promises that he's spoken before for us to come to pass in our life. We see in Genesis chapter 20, over in verse 4, here is where Abimelech had come near, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? God will not slay a righteous nation. He will protect and preserve a righteous nation. That's why we continually pray for this nation to come to the place of repentance, and we are praying for the righteous to be elected and for God to turn things around to bring this nation back to a standard of righteousness. He will not slay a righteous nation. You and I are the ones that count, because he says, if my people, it depends on what you and I do, the people of God, that we must pray and we must do what he says in order for him to come and bring a restoration and a healing to this land. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 16, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 16, over in verse 20, so we're talking about blessings for the righteous. He says, That all which is altogether just and righteous shalt thou follow. God expects you to follow what is right, the way of the word of God, the way of righteousness. And what's going to happen? That thou mayest, thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God give thee. You're going to have his life. You're going to be able to inherit the land. What's the land? The physical land is a type of the spiritual land, which are all the promises of God that have been given to us you're going to be able to possess your inherited promises if you are one who is following after 
righteousness. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 25, over in verse 15, as we're looking at results and rewards of righteousness that will come forth in your life if you walk in the way of righteousness. Deuteronomy 25, 15. Thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have. It means God wants you to deal with things fairly. You don't cheat somebody. You don't slight them. You always do things right. That thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God give thee. It's tied into long life. Those ones that are cheats, those ones that are stealers, those ones that are not doing things correctly, they're going to have a shortened life. God wants us to be righteous in all of our dealings with people so that our days will be lengthened. In 2 Samuel, in chapter 22, 2 Samuel 22, over in verse 21 and following, he says this, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. In the measure that you're righteous is the measure that you're going to be rewarded by the Lord. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. He wants you to walk in holiness before the Lord. We've got to clean up. We've got to be cleansed from all sin, turn away from everything that's not of him. For why has this happened? Because I've kept the ways of the Lord. That's why he was considered righteous before him. And I've not wickedly departed from my God. Keeping the ways of the Lord is essential if you are going to walk in righteousness and show cleanness of hands. All his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. No, we're not going to depart from the way of the Lord. I was also upright before him. He wants you to be upright in everything you do. And I've kept myself from mine iniquity. God wants you to keep yourself from all wickedness. Remember, that flesh is a body of death that does not want to do anything right. You cannot walk after the flesh. You're to keep yourself from all wickedness that would try to come forth. Therefore, the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness. It means he's going to pay you. He's going to return things back to you according to your cleanness in his eyesight. See, God's looking at every single one of us. He's seeing what's in our heart. He's going to see. He sees what's our walk. He sees whether we're righteous, whether we're cleansed, whether we're walking in the way of the Lord, whether we have cleanness in the sight of the Lord. And he's going to reward you according to your righteousness. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 6, he says this, Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David thy father great mercy. Why did David get great mercy? According as he walked before me in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. The truth is the word, righteousness, walking in the way of righteousness, and he had uprightness of heart. Your heart must be right before the Lord. And now it's kept for him this great kindness that has given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Great mercy will be shown to you if you walk in truth, if you will walk in righteousness, and if you will truly have uprightness of heart before the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 8, in verse 32, he says this, <coughs> Then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. God will give you according to your righteousness. He wants you to be walking in the ways of righteousness. He will justify the righteous. So God will he'll come on the scene for you. Yet he's going to deal with the wicked. Don't ever judge the wicked. God's going to deal with them. But for, for sure, he's going to justify the righteous. And he will give you according to your righteousness in life. Over in Job, Job chapter 36. In Job 36, verse 7. Job 36, verse 7. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous. God does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous. His eyes are over the righteous. But with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. So he withdraws not his eyes from the righteous. That means God's looking after you. He's watching you. He sees what you're doing, and he's going to be there to minister to you and bring blessings to you in your life. We also see over in Psalms, Psalms chapter 5 and verse 8. Psalms 5, 8, he says, Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. God's always going to lead you in righteousness. Because of your enemy. What's your enemy? Your enemy is Satan. What's he trying to do? He's trying to bring destruction at you. How's he going to be able to do it? If there's sin in the camp, in the open door, you give place to him. 
That's why he wants us to walk in the way of righteousness, because of your enemies. If you're not walking righteous, hey, the enemies are going to be able to work against you. The devil's going to have place in your life, and the demons will come in, and they will carry out destructive works. Remember, there's a cause for every curse that comes. Things just don't happen. It's all because of open doors of sin. But praise God, we can get delivered, we can get healed and set free from those bondages. So you need to make sure that we walk in righteousness so the enemies do not have place in our life. Psalms 5, verse 12. The Lord will bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. God wants to bless you. If you're walking as righteous, his blessings will come upon you. And notice, he'll give you favor. It'll compass you like a shield around you to protect you. The favor of God. God wants you to have favor. It's not automatic. Their favor is only for those who are going to be the righteous. They're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. We see in Psalm 7, in verse 9, he says this, O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. He's going to try and test everybody's heart. The reigns refers to the emotions and the affections. It's talking about in the soulish area is what that's referring to. He's going to test your heart. He's going to test your soul to find out what's really going on in you. He's going to establish the just. He will establish you. And you will not be moved by attacks from the enemy. And you'll be able to stand against all of the enemy's attacks. He, he said, he goes on, my defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. He'll defend you. He'll deliver you out of things that come at you. God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. Actually, the way this should be is God is a righteous judge. It's not the, they didn't really bring this quite right. Young's really translates this better from a Hebrew standpoint. God is a righteous judge. Not that he's judging the righteous, he's a righteous judge. Showing the fact that he's a righteous judge who will deal with things. Because what's in the context? He's angry with the wicked every day. He's, he is going to be angry with the wicked. Just talking about the wicked down here that are evil, that are walking contrary to the ways of the Word of God. God wants you to know that He's going to deal with all those people that are not walking uprightly before the Lord. He's the judge. Now in Psalms 9, verse 1, He says, I will praise Thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all Thy marvelous works. I'll be glad and rejoice in Thee. I will sing praise to Thy name, O Thou Most High. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall at thy per and perish at thy presence. It means the enemies are going to fall back. They're not going to have victory over you. What is God doing? For thou hast maintained my right and my cause and satest in thy throne judging right or judging according to righteousness. God's always going to do what's right. One thing, you can trust the Lord. God is a righteous judge. He will do what is right and he will come on the scene to deliver us and from the enemies, and they will be knocked back. You will see that he will bring you out of those areas of bondage. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. I'll tell you, God, he is a jealous God, and he is a God who will defend his people, and he's a God who will fight for you and bring you victory in your life. Over in verse 8, He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. God is fair. He is a judge in righteousness. He's always going to do things upright. You must understand. You can trust in Him. You want to be sure you are walking in righteousness. Otherwise, you are going to see judgment coming against you. Psalms 11, verse 7. The Lord, righteous Lord, loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. If He loves righteousness and you're walking in righteousness, then He loves you. He's loving those who are walking uprightly. His countenance, just behold the upright. Remember, he's looking to and fro throughout the whole earth to see who is going to walk in his ways so he can show himself strong. He's not some distant God. No, he's a God who is watching and looking to bring forth his promises in our life. Psalms 15, verse 1, Who shall abide in thy tabernacle, and who shall dwell in thy holy hill? It's the one who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. God wants you to have the walk. He wants you to be working righteousness. He wants you to be speaking right words, as we talked about today, speaking righteousness, speaking the truth in his heart. We see in Psalm 17, 
We see results and rewards of righteousness, what it will bring forth in your life. Psalm 17, verse 15, he says, As for me, I will uphold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. In other words, as you are focused upon his word in righteousness, that's the way you're, you're going to meet God according to his ways in righteousness, and it begins to manifest in your life because you're doing it, the word coming into you, you're going to be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Otherwise, you're going to be changed into the very image of Jesus Christ. You're going to become like him through the word of righteousness that is going to bring a transforming work in your life. We see over in Psalms 19, Psalms 19, we pick up with verse 7. He talks about your word, his word. He says, the law of the Lord is perfect. It will convert the soul. That's why we've got to get the word in it, so it will convert our soul, change our soul. The testimony is sure, making wise the simple. It will produce wisdom for you. The statutes of the Lord are right. They'll rejoice the heart. That's why God wants you to have a, a heart that is full of rejoicing. It will happen because you've got the word in you. The command of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. That's what it will do. It will open your eyes up. The fear of the Lord's clean, enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. We've got to trust God and know that he will do what is right. His judgments will always be right. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, were warned, and in the keeping of them there is great reward. Those that keep his word, those that walk in the way of righteousness are going to have great reward in their life. At the same time, we're also going to be warned. God's going to warn us. We've got to be sure that we are walking that straight and narrow path. In Psalms 24, verse 5, Psalms 24, verse 5, he says, He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That's what God has for you. Well, who is this for? We come back here in verse 3, he says, Who's going to ascend in the hill of the Lord? Who's going to stand in this holy place? The one who has clean hands, pure heart, not lifted up a soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He's going to receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Blessing goes hand in hand with righteousness and the salvation of the Lord. God wants you to receive it. We've got to be sure that we're walking in the right path. We see in Psalms 34, verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. This is where this is quoted from when it's in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. He's hearing what you pray. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. In 1 Peter, it just quotes the first part. It doesn't finish the rest of it, but that's what's going to happen. The guys that do evil are going to be cut off. God wants us to know that we're going to be doing what he says so that we will not have the face of the Lord against us. He's going to be against you if you walk in the ways of sin. Verse 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of their troubles. What will God do? If you're walking right, righteous before God, you pray to the Lord. He will come and deliver you out of your troubles, whatever your situation is. God knows exactly what you have need of, and he will come to minister to your need. The Lord's nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. In the New Testament, we now get a new heart. We just have a heart now that's right before them. In the Old Testament, their heart was not right. It was wicked. That's why they had to have this contrite heart and a broken heart in the Old Testament era. In the New Testament, we get a new heart is when we get a new spirit. Remember, when we're born again, you just have to guard your heart and make sure that you've got the word in your heart and you're walking right. He's nigh to those that do have a right heart before the Lord. And he says, many of the afflictions of the righteous. Many people quote the scripture. They're usually quoting it to say, well, you know, many of the afflictions of the righteous and trying to justify why they have all these problems and they're continuing in them and they aren't getting free of them. Well, they forget the rest of the verse. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Well, wait a minute. You can't just quote half the verse and skip the rest of it. The Lord delivers them out of them all. You can be delivered out of all of the afflictions, everything that comes against you, if you're the righteous. The reason why people aren't getting delivered a lot of times is they're not righteous. 
They're not walking in the way of the Lord, and God is not going to be able to manifest himself if we're not righteous before him. We see in Psalms 34, 35 that is, 35 verse 24, Judge me, O Lord my God, according to my righteousness. Can you, you have confidence to say that before God? Judge me, Lord, according to my righteousness. If you're walking righteous, then you have confidence. You got sin in the camp, uh, you're not going to have confidence for anything because you know you're going to be in trouble. God wants you to be walking righteous. Let them not rejoice over me, talking about the enemies. No, they're not going to be able to rejoice over you because you are going to walk in righteousness and God is going to deliver you out of the attacks of the enemy. Remember, he will deliver you out of all the afflictions, anything that comes at you. Psalms 35, verse 5 and 6. 37, verse 5 and 6. Psalms 37, verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. You've got to commit your way unto the Lord. You can't just try to get God to do something whenever you have a need and then go and walk in your own way. It's not going to work. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. God will come on the scene, and he will do what's right. Because what's he looking at? He's looking at your righteousness because you're walking in the way of the Lord. You're trusting in him. He's going to bring it to pass. And he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and the judgment, which is his justice. Judgment also refers to justice as the noonday. It's going to come. God is a just God, and you can trust him to do what is right. In Psalms 37, down in verse 17, the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. He'll uphold you. He'll uphold you in whatever things. You just need to look to him. Keep your eyes on him. Don't let yourself get down depressed. Look to him and walk in his righteous ways. He will uphold the righteous. We see in verse 19, They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Those that are the righteous, no. They're not going to be ashamed because they're going to triumph over all their enemies. The enemies won't triumph over you. The days of famine might be famine for others that are under judgment, but not for you. Because God's going to provide. He's going to, you're going to be satisfied. We see down in verse 22. But such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. You can inherit the blessings. The cursed are going to be cut off and eliminated. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Well, of course, the good man is not talking about just someone that's just walking however he wants. This is a word which means the strong man, the warrior man, the guy who rises up to be a warrior. That's what the word means in the Hebrew. They're ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way, and he's going to bring you out of all the bondages. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholding him with his hand. God will be there to lift you up. Verse 25, he says, I've been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God will not forsake the righteous. You will always have your needs. You won't be begging bread. You will be seeing God provide for you and meet all of your needs. In verse 29, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. That's what God has for us. In verse 32, the wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. Yeah, the wicked hate the righteous. The world doesn't like you at all. People that are not walking in the way of the Lord, they're against you. That's why, though, God will deliver you out of anything. If you put the angels in operation by praying, the angels will have charge of you to keep you and protect you and keep you in all of your ways. Verse 39, the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. He's your salvation. He's your deliverer. He's the one who will protect you. And he's the one that will give you strength in time of trouble if you will keep your eyes upon the Lord. In Psalms 45, we see another resultant blessing reward of being righteous. Verse 4, he says, In thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. He talks about fearful things. Fearful is what it really means. So here, because of truth and meekness and righteousness, you're going to ride prosperously. God's prosperity is tied into you walking in the ways of the Lord. In Psalms 55, verse 22, 
Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Don't carry burdens. Cast them upon the Lord. Don't get full of care, worry, and anxiety. Cast them on the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. God, you won't be moved. No. The enemies are going to, what's going to be moved out of the way. You're going to be set. God is going to keep you, and you are going to come through victorious. Praise God. Over in Psalm 72, in verse 7, he says this, In his days shall the righteous flourish. If you're flourishing, hey, that means you're prospering, you're being blessed, things that you're sowing are producing, you're reaping what you sow, you're seeing fruit, more fruit, much fruit in your life. And what else? The righteous are going to flourish in abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. You're going to have peace. Righteousness will bring peace in your life. And you will flourish. You will be blessed in all that you do. We see so often that righteousness is tied in with peace. Psalms 85 and verse 10. Mercy and truth are met together. And righteousness and peace, the word shalom, have kissed each other. Otherwise, when there's righteousness, they're going to be also there with peace. And shalom is a word which means more than just peace of mind. Completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, safety, health, prosperity, all these things. It's peace across the board in all areas because of walking in righteousness. That's what God wants for us. He wants us to walk righteous before him. Verse 11, truth shall spring out of earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. He looks down from heaven at the righteous. And he says, righteousness shall go before him, shall set us in the way of his steps. See, righteousness is going to go before you and set you in the way that he has for you. When God sees that you're righteous, he's going to be going ahead to prosper your way and to bless your way, set you in the way of his steps. Otherwise, God will direct you. He'll show you the right path. You'll, make, you'll, make, you'll be going in the right ways. He'll put thoughts in your mind to walk in the right steps. It is the way of the Lord. The Lord's led, leading us in this path. You may not even realize it at times, but he'll do those things for you. Psalms 89, verse 16. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in righteousness shall they be exalted. Who does God exalt? The righteous. Not the proudful ones. They brought low. The humble ones are going to be exalted. The righteous ones shall be exalted. Praise God. In Psalms 92, we see in verse 12, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The palm tree is a tree that you just can't kill easily by just cutting it around on the outside. You've got to get to the core of it and kill it before the thing will die. Well, that means he's got something the enemy can't get to us just by trying to hit us from things on the outside. He's got to get to the inside of us in the area of the heart. But no, if you're righteous, that means you've got the word in your heart. and You're walking in the way of the Lord. You're going to flourish like the palm tree. You're going to be strong in the midst of storms and attacks, that would, spiritual storms that would have come against you. And you're going to grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You're going to grow. You're righteous. You're walking in righteous. You're going to grow up spiritually. You're going to become strong. God wants you to grow up and be strong in the Lord. He says, those that be, that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You're going to be planted in the house of the Lord because you're going to be hearing his word, praising, worshiping him, doing the things of righteousness. They that st shall still bring forth fruit in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. That's in a positive way it's talking about. You're going to be flourishing. Good things are going to be coming forth in your life, even in old age. Don't think you're going to, you know, pl plateau and go down in old age. No, we should continue to flourish throughout our life. Praise God. In Psalms 94, Verse 21, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. Yeah, the enemies, they hate the ones that are righteous. Condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. You've got to always look to the Lord to be your defense against tax from the enemy. If you're righteous, he'll be there. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. That's right. Your enemies are going to be cut off mm -hmm. if you are one who is walking as the righteous. Mm -hmm. Again, we see so many of these scriptures talking about God's going to deal with your enemies. Mm -hmm. Psalms 103, verse 6, The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. That's right. 
all, is doing righteous and judgment for all the oppressed. He's going to do what's right. He's going to bring forth things for those to bring us out of bondage and to bring us out of oppression. Verse seven, Psalms 103, verse 17, The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear Him and His righteousness unto children's children. Mercy, again, those that have the fear of the Lord, those that are righteous before the Lord. In Psalms 106, we see a tremendous promise. In verse 3, Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be blessed. God wants you blessed. You'll be blessed going in, blessed coming out, blessed in the basket, blessed in the store, head, to head, head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You'll be blessed in all that you do. You'll bless you know, the work of your hands. You'll prosper in everything you do. If you keep what's justice, justice and right, and do righteousness at all times. Always do what is right. God is taking notice of that in your life. Psalms 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. That's what God wants. He says, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth, and the generation of the upright shall be blessed. That's the guy who's walking in righteousness, uprightness of heart. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. God wants to prosper you. And his righteousness endureth forever. It's all because of the fact that you're walking in the ways of righteousness, see? Verse 6, surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. God pays attention to the righteous. I tell you, when you're walking righteous, it's like that God needs focus and he sees, I see the, the righteous like a, a magnet, you know, or, or a light shining on you, and he sees the righteous. He's going to keep his focus upon you. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trust in the Lord. Your eyes are on him. His heart's established. He won't be afraid till he see his desires upon his enemies. They're going to be smitten, put underfoot. He's dispersed. He's given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. We see this again. It's all because of his righteousness that's enduring forever, that is bringing these things forth in our life. So if you're righteous, then you're going to see great things happen to you. We see over in Psalms 119, 164. Psalms 119. Verse 164, seven times do I, a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Praise God continually when he's doing righteous things for you. And he will defend you. He will defeat your enemies. He will perform his word. When you're using the authority that you have and you're speaking forth the word, you're actually executing his judgments against your enemies. See, he's delivering you from the enemy's works. You're casting out the demons. You're speaking the mountains. You're resisting them. This is God's really executing His judgments against your enemies that have come against you. He will set you free. Praise Him for all the wonderful things that He is doing for you. Over in Psalms 146, verse 8, look what He says. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The righteous. Miracles will happen. They'll be liberated from bondages. They'll come out of depression if they are the ones who are walking in the ways of righteousness. Praise God. Over in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. In Proverbs chapter 3, we're looking at these blessings. He says, the, For the froward is an abomination to the Lord. That's the one who's walking the crooked path, not walking in the way of righteousness. But his secret is with the righteous. His secret is, means his counsel, God's counsel. God will give you his counsel to show you what to do in a situation if you're walking as the righteous. God will bring these things to you. In verse 33, he says, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. That's right. Curses come when you walk in wickedness. But he blesseth the habitation of the just. The just is the righteous the ones that are walking in His ways. God will bless you wherever you are. We see in Proverbs chapter 4, in verse 18, He says, The path of the just is as the shining light. And you're walking it out. It's going to shine more and more into the perfect or established day when you see God manifest Himself. As you're walking it out, you'll be walking that out, 
and you're going to see the blessing, the blessed established day that come forth, the perfect day when God shows up and manifests his promise or his blessing in your life. Praise the Lord. We see in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 20, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. God is always going to lead you in the way of righteousness. That's why if you want to be sure you're walking in the way of the Lord, be sure it's always in line with the Word. He will always lead you in the right path if you look to the Word, the way of righteousness. In Proverbs 10, verse 2, he says, Treasures of wickedness will profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. It'll deliver us. It'll deliver us from death. It'll deliver us from any sickness, disease, any things that come against you as you're walking in righteousness, see? In verse 3, The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. Mm -hmm. See, again, why these people that are walking in wickedness and they have all these problems? Because they're not going to see the blessings of God. But those are the ones that are the righteous. Your soul's not going to famish. He's going to be ministering his blessings unto you. Down in verse 6, Blessings are upon the head of the just, the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Blessings will come on you if you are righteous and one of the just. Verse 7, the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. This means the memorial, the remembrance of the righteous will be blessed. And we remember people that have been walking righteous, and their remembrance is blessed. You'll be remembered as one who is blessed because of the fact that you are walking in the ways of righteousness. Over in verse 24, <clears throat> the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon them, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Do you have desires that God's put in your heart? If you're walking in righteousness, the promise is the desire of the righteous will be granted unto you. Mm -hmm. God will bring your desires of your heart to pass in your life. Mm -hmm. In verse 28, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Oh, they might have all these expectations, and they're not going to come to pass. Lots of people are, have these expectations and great hopes, but they never come to pass. No, oh, God will bring our hopes to pass. The hope of the righteous will be gladness. He's going to bring forth the blessings for you. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction to the workers of iniquity. That's somebody who's not walking right. We've got to walk uprightly. And the righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. See, the wicked are going to be eliminated. And the righteous, we're the ones that are going to go on, and we're going to be here with Jesus to rule and reign in the millennial reign. We are not going to be removed. We are going to be here with the Lord. Praise God. In chapter 11, verse 4, we'll be here ruling and reigning with him. Proverbs 11, 4, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Eh, people think their money is going to get them out of their problems. No, it's righteousness that's going to deliver you from anything that is coming against you. Verse 5, The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. God wants you to be perfect. Remember, before him, the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. Otherwise, the blessing is God, your righteousness will be involved in directing your way. God will direct you in the right path. He'll show you what to do. He'll, give, he'll lead you somehow and to show you how you are to walk, which will direct your way. The righteous, the upright, shall deliver them. The transgressors will be taken in their own naughtiness. Again, it comes down to righteousness. You want to be delivered? You know, some people think, well, I'll just cast out the demons and everything will be fine. If you don't walk in righteousness, you're not going to stay delivered. You'll never really get delivered because you just rip the cover off of things when you first start working in deliverance anyway. It's a, a network of them, and it's a process to systematically drive things out. And if you don't walk in the ways of righteousness, you're going to let things come in back in. You're going to be in worse shape. Mm -hmm. I've talked to lots of people that have gone through some deliverance, but they're not under the Word and walking in line with the Word, and they got worse. They wonder, I wonder what happened. Well, because, number one, he didn't continue in deliverance, but number two, also, he didn't walk in line with the Word. They weren't doing the things that God told them to do. God wants us to walk in the ways of righteousness. It is absolutely essential. Verse 8, the righteous is delivered out of trouble. Again, we see these great promises. Who is it all for? It's always for the righteous, isn't it, or the just. That's the ones that are going to get God's attention. A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just or the righteous be delivered. See, God gives you knowledge of his ways. 
and you act on his word, he's, getting, he's showing you the way to walk in, and you will be delivered from bondages that would come against you. Verse 19, as righteousness tends to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. Do not follow after the lust of the flesh or evil or any sinful ways. Do not compromise the things of God. You're pursuing it to your own death. You're going to bring death and destruction upon you. But if you walk in the ways of righteousness, it will tend to life. Verse 20, 21, 21. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Praise God. We see so much where righteousness is all tied in to your deliverance in your life. And verse 28. He that trusts in his riches shall fall. Don't trust in your riches and your money or your job or whatever all. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. You trust in the Lord. He will always provide for you. And you're going to flourish as a branch. Verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. You see, those that are walking in righteousness, they're going to have fruit. It's going to be like a tree of life. All this blessings coming in you. You're also going to be one who's going to be reaching out to others and winning souls and showing the fact that you have wisdom. Verse 31, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Much more the wicked and the sinner, oh, they're going to be, they're going to be paid back with judgments that are going to come upon them. See, God is a righteous God. He's going to bless the righteous, but he's going to pay back the wicked and the sinner. They're not going to get away. Nobody gets away with walking in sin. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 3. A man that shall not be established, shall, a man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Why? Because he's established in the way of the Lord. You're not going to be moved. You're not going to be beat up by the devil. You're not going to be having all these destructive things coming against you in your life. Proverbs 12, 7. The wicked are overthrown or not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. You're going to be able to stand when you have built your spiritual house on righteousness. You can't build it on unrighteousness or you're going to have all kinds of problems. In verse 13, the wicked snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just, the righteous, shall come out of trouble. Because you're going to learn how to speak the word. You're going to speak the right things. You're going to see the power of God come on the scene. But it's all because of the fact that you are the righteous. Look what he even says down in verse 21. There shall no evil happen to the just. That's a tremendous promise. No evil happen to the just. Praise God. You will walk righteous. God's promise is no evil is going to happen to you. But the wicked, they'll be filled with mischief. So you need to take hold of these promises. Of course, you've got to be sure you're walking in, in line with righteousness. Otherwise, they're not going to work. Verse 28. In the way of righteousness is life. In the pathway there, uh, there is no death. That means no destructive things happening. Righteousness is absolutely essential. Chapter 13, verse 6. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness will overthrow the sinner. The sinner, they're going to have all kinds of problems. They always do have problems. The world's full of problems. They have all kinds of destructive things that come on them. But righteousness will keep you if you're upright in the way. It will guard you. The word not sar, actually, that's right. That's the one that means more watch over you. It'll watch over you that are upright in the way, and that has the effect of, of keeping you. Verse 21. Evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. See, God's going to repay you for all the things that you do. Do righteous things. Speak righteousness. Do righteous deeds. Carry out righteousness in all aspects. And then a tremendous promise in verse 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for who? The righteous, the just. Many people like to quote this, but you know what? You can't quote this and say, see this promise come to pass if you're not just. See, people assume that, well, I'm a Christian, so that means I'm righteous. No, you're only righteous if you're doing righteousness and walking in the way of righteousness. But the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. He wants to bring it into your hands and to prosper you and bless you in your life. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32. He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. Don't ever oppress or take advantage of the poor. 
He that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. And then in verse 32, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. When we die, we know where we're going. We're going to heaven because we're righteous. We're going to be with the Lord forever. Uh, the wicked, they got no hope. They're in trouble. They're the ones that are on the way to hell, and they are going to be in everlasting torment. He says in verse 34, righteousness exalts a nation. That's why we've got to see righteousness, righteous leaders and righteousness come into this nation. We need people that will rise up and stand up for what is right and not compromise and bring righteous judgment, righteous, ju righteous laws, righteous uh, ruling in the fear of the Lord in this nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. That's why it all depends on what you and I are doing, the people of God, to see God bring restoration to this country as we pray. So we want to be exalted. We want to see this nation exalted once again as well. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 6, In the house of the righteous is much treasure, riches, wealth. God will bless you. But in the revenues of the wicked is nothing but trouble. Oh, you think these guys got all this money that everything got to be fine for them? They got all kinds of trouble. You just don't know it. They got all kinds of trouble. They got all kinds of problems. They got marital problems. They got family problems. They got all kinds of things that are just causing them all kind of stress and all these negative things that are going on, all kind of destructive things. God's Word is true. They're not, they, they, they put on a show. They portray like they got it all, but no. They all got all kinds of sickness. They got all kinds of problems. They got all kinds of bondages. The revenues of the wicked is trouble, but the house of the righteous brings much trouble. Excuse me, it brings much treasure or blessings, riches and treasure to us. Verse 9, the way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. It's an abomination. That's why you can't walk in sin. He loveth him that follow after righteousness. God loves those that follow after righteousness. You walk in the way of his word. He loves you. Verse 29, the Lord is far from the wicked. He didn't pay it. He's not around them. But he heareth the prayer of the righteous. That's right. He's going to hear if you are praying right before the Lord, that is, of course. Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it is safe. Not just anybody who calls on the name of the Lord. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? They called on the name that Paul preached. It didn't work for them because they weren't righteous. Only the righteous are going to be able to run into it. And they call on the name of the Lord. God's going to show up. He's going to manifest himself. He is going to bring forth his promises, and they're going to be safe and protected. It's a strong tower for all of us. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7, it says, The just man walks in his integrity. The righteous man, we're to walk in the integrity of the Lord. His children are blessed after him. That's, of course, if they walk in line with the word, they're going to have to walk in line with it. It's not automatic, remember. Each one has to walk in the ways of righteousness. Remember, we saw that scripture talking today about Daniel, talking about Noah, and talking about Job. When judgments came, their righteousness delivered them, but it didn't deliver their sons and their daughters. Everybody's righteousness is upon them. The righteous, the righteous is upon him, but the wicked and the wicked is upon them. You can't deliver the father or the son or, or whoever. They've got to walk in their ways. But if a person will walk in the way of righteousness, then the children will be blessed because of his walk. You see, your walk is important. It's influencing your children. You've got to be sure. You can't expect them to walk right, you know, and think you're going to have a good effect upon them if you're not walking right. Proverbs 21, verse 21. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. God will honor you. You'll find the life of God. The blessings of God will come forth for you. Over in Isaiah, Chapter 3, in verse 10. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. See, the curse is, the enemy comes and eats up the, your works, and you don't, get, you don't get the fruit from all the things you've been sowing. So much reap little, you know, you don't get anywhere. But the guy who's righteous, he's going to eat the fruit of his doings, see? You're going to reap the blessings. It'll be also be well with you because you're walking in the ways of the Lord. Over in Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 2, talking about a nation again. 
Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. There's going to be nations that are going to be saved in these last days. We want this nation, we want all nations, if they would turn to the Lord, to be saved. The righteous nation that keeps the truth. That shows you what's the evidence of a righteous nation. They keep the word. Those are the ones are going to enter in. God wants us to walk in the ways of righteousness. He wants a righteous nation. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16. It says, Judgment will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remains in the fruitful field. And this is talking about here, we'll go back in verse 15. It says, Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. Otherwise, judgment's going to come on those that aren't walking in righteousness. They're walking in the wrong ways. But righteousness is going to remain because they're walking in the way of the Lord. They're going to be fruitful in their life. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, shalom. And the effects of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. The work of righteousness in your life will bring completeness, peace, soundness, welfare, safety, health, prosperity, deliverance, victory in all areas of life. The effects of righteousness will bring you to the place of being quiet and have, being secure, assurance forever. Boy, righteousness is very important for you to walk in the ways of. You've got to make sure you're walking uprightly before them. All these ones that Christians that aren't walking the way of the Word, they think that, they wonder why blessings aren't coming. It's because they're not doing what He says. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 33, 15, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. That's what we need to do. He that despiseth the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hands from holding a bribe, he's not going to cheat people, <coughs> that stops his ears from the hearing of blood, shuts his eyes from seeing evil, you don't want to see anything evil. He shall dwell on high. See, the one who's going to walk right. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. That means he's blessed. He's got provision. He's defended. He's dwelling on high. You're walking in the ways of victory. That's what God has for us. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. You'll get revelation of him. They shall behold the land that is very far off. You're going to behold it. You're going to see the things that God has for you. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, a familiar uh, verse for many people that quote it. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I'll strengthen thee, yea, I'll help thee, yea, I'll uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Why is God going to do it? Because you're righteous. That's why the right hand of his righteousness is going to manifest himself for those that are walking in the ways of righteousness before the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 48, we see where again it's tied in with peace. He says in verse 18, Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. He's lamenting. If they just listen and obey my commandments, then had they peace been like a river, and thy righteousness is the waves of the sea. Otherwise, peace and blessing, that's this word shalom again, and righteousness is the waves of the sea. It just means it's going to be flowing and just coming in one after another after another. Righteousness brings all kinds of blessings coming your way. What's the key? We've got to be hearkening to the voice of the Lord. In chapter 54 of Isaiah, verse 14, we saw the scripture when we talked about where to be established in righteousness. It says, in righteousness shall thou be established. What's going to be the result? You're going to be far from oppression. Oppression is going to be eliminated for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. You're all walking in the ways of righteousness. And then we see down in verse 17, No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. A lot of people like to quote this verse. It's a great verse. Anybody that's speaking against you, any weapon formed against you, I condemn that in the name of Jesus. Well, it didn't work for me. Well, are you walking as righteous? Well, not really. That's why. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. Otherwise, it is tied into you being righteous in your walk. Mm -hmm. You've got to be serving Him and walking in Him if you think this verse is going to work on your behalf. In Isaiah chapter 59, see, people have a tendency to take scriptures out of context or not look at what all they're saying and try to apply them in their life and wonder why they don't work. 
Isaiah 59, 16. I saw that there was no man, wonder that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him, it supported him. Righteousness will always keep you strong and stable. He put on righteousness as a breastplate. God wants you to put it on, remember, through the word in you. And a helmet of salvation upon his head. That's the mind being renewed to the word. Put on garments of vengeance for clothing. You're going to rise up with a vengeance ready to smite your enemies and destroy them in warfare. And it was clad with zeal as a cloak. You're not going to be passive. You're going to be zealous. You're going to get aggressive against the enemies to destroy them. According to their deeds, accordingly he will pay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he'll pay a recompense. This is the intercessor who is righteous, putting on righteousness, the word in him, he is going to be used of the Lord to destroy the works of the enemy. You're going to repay fury to those enemies of the Lord and destroy them. See, that's what you're doing. You're actually doing that when you're casting out the demons or interceding. We're just we're vessels of the Lord, being as righteous, that are repaying God's fury to destroy their works. It's not just praying some prayer and seeing if God will do something. No, we are releasing the power of God, the might of God, to destroy the works of the enemy, taking our place as a vessel for God to flow through. Isaiah chapter 60. We see down in verse 21. The people also shall be all righteous. In fact, if we back up, we read this this morning, but you need to see what this is talking about. Verse 19 says, The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. This is talking about when we see that the, we're going to see the end of times and the way who's going to be in this group. The sun shall no more go down, he says. The moon will draw itself. The Lord will be thy everlasting light. The days of morning will be ended. <laughs> the people also shall be all righteous. These are the people that are going to be with the Lord. They shall inherit the land forever. That's right. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. <laughs> You're going to possess all the inheritance that belongs to you in Christ because you're righteous and you're going to be glorifying the Lord. The people that are going to be in this group are all going to be those that are righteous. Otherwise, if you're not righteous, God's not going to manifest himself for you. Isaiah 64, verse 5, Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. God will show up. He'll come. He'll come to you. If you rejoice and work righteousness, that's what he's looking for in your life. We see in Jeremiah 22, down in verse 15, tremendous blessings. Thou shalt thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar. Did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice? And then it was well with him. He did justice, which is righteousness. If you do what's right, you're going to be well with you. God wants to bless you. He will bring great things to pass in your life. Over in Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 20. When a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commits iniquity, hmm, I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered as if it never was. His blood will require of thy hand. This is talking about someone you witness to. God wants you to be sure that you're calling the righteous, that calling the sinners to repentance, and those that have been born again, and they haven't walked in the way of righteousness, they've turned away from it, call them back to it. They're, you know, this guy, it's talking about a righteous guy, he, does, he turns away from it, he's committing iniquity. Someone that was right, and now they're walking the way of sin. You don't just abandon them. You call them. You call them to repentance. Call them to repentance. But if he won't repent, you know, he's going to die in his sin. His righteousness, which he's done, will be not remembered. It's like it never was. His blood will I require at thine hand, he says, because if we don't minister unto him, God wants us to reach them. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he's warned, thou hast also delivered thy soul. See, God wants you to be sure that you're speaking the word to people, warning them, calling them to repentance. We must carry out the things that God tells us to do. We see also similar over in 
Ezekiel 18 that we need to look at. Down here in verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear, this means to lift, the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear or lift the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wickedness or the wicked shall be upon him. I can't get the wickedness off of my son, daughter, father, whoever. They can't get it off of me. My righteousness will be because of my righteousness. Their righteousness will be because of their righteousness. Everybody has got to walk the walk. If the wicked will turn from his sins that he's committed, keep all my statutes, do that which is lawful and right, he'll live. He'll not die. That's why we want to see people come to repentance and turn away from the ways of sin. All his transgressions that he's committed, all the sins that he's committed, they shall not be mentioned or means remembered. It's as that they're washed away. Because that's exactly what the Lord does. He doesn't remember our sins and iniquities anymore. In his righteousness that he's done, he shall live. But then he goes on and says, When the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, doeth according to all the abominations the wicked man doeth, shall he live? The answer is no. All his righteousness that he hath done in the past shall not be remembered or called to mind. It's as if he never was righteous to begin with. That's why Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who are now working lawlessness. In his sin that he hath sinned, what's going to happen to him? In his trespass, he's going to die. And they got mad at the Lord over this. He said, the way of the Lord's not equal. It's not fair. He says, fear now, house of Israel. is not my way equal or fair. Are not your ways unequal? The problem is you. God is always fair. He's just. You walk in righteousness, your sins are going to be washed away. You won't be remembered. You turn from righteousness, you walk in sin, your righteousness is washed away like it never was. That's being fair, and that's being just and righteous. And that's exactly the what God will do. We see over in Ezekiel 14, we looked at this before, but look at it again and show you this. He says in verse 13, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then I'll stretch out my hand upon it, will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. That means if there's continual sin, judgments are going to come. Then he says in verse 14, Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they were in the time when judgments came on the land. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness. Otherwise, judgment might be coming on everybody all around, but God will deliver you because you're righteous. That's why. Don't be afraid of judgments that come. If you are righteous, God will deliver you in the midst of everybody else having judgments. He delivered them, and God will deliver us as well. Praise God. Over in Daniel, chapter 12. Daniel, chapter 12. He says in verse 3, They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. God wants you to turn others to righteousness. It's because you're walking righteous. You're going to shine as the stars forever. God takes notice of those that are turn, helping people to turn to righteousness. That's why you want to be preaching righteousness and calling people to repentance, encourage them to walk in the right way. You do that. God's going to take notice, and you're going to be shining as the brightness of the firmament, as the stars forever and ever. Hosea, chapter 10. We've got three more. We'll finish for the Old Testament the blessings and results that will come. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. That means everything you're going to do is according to the word, you're speaking, you're doing the word of righteousness. You're going to reap in mercy. The mercy of God will come. It's not just going to come for anybody that just sows whatever they want. Break up your fallow ground. That's the hard ground, untilled area. And what's the ground? It's a type of your heart. You need to deal with everything in your heart. You can't have any hardness of heart, bitterness in your heart, and evil in your heart. You've got to get all that stuff out. It's time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you, which is his blessings coming to you. God wants you to seek the Lord. 
get his word in you. Sow to yourselves according to righteousness. He will come and reign righteousness, which is bringing blessings upon you in your life. We see in Zechariah the promise for those that are going to walk in righteousness. Verse 8. Zechariah 8.8, 8, he says, I will bring them and will dwell, uh, they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people. I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Again, we see this time and time again. In truth and righteousness. That's the way God is going to manifest himself for you. And God says we're going to be my people and we're going to be his God. That's relationship established. Then we see one more in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4, he says, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. They're going to get all burnt up. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. That's right, it's coming with fire. It's going to mean judgment's coming, saith the Lord of hosts. And it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness that's the Lord arising. You have the fear of the na name, the Son of Righteousness. His righteousness is coming into you through the Word, and you walking in His ways, and He is going to arise. With healing in His wings, you're going to get healed. You're going to go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You're going to grow spiritually, and you're going to become strong in the Lord. And you shall tread down the wicked. You're going to tread the enemies underfoot. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Tremendous promises. Because the Son of Righteousness is going to rise for the righteous. He's not going to rise for the unrighteous, that's for sure. He's going to rise for those that are walking right with him. And what's he going to bring forth? He is going to bring forth healing. He's going to bring forth spiritual growth and strength in you. The enemies are going to be treading underfoot. And you are going to walk in victory. Tremendous promises that we see. When we look at this, we see that the Lord will, will deliver us out of wrath and judgments if we're righteous. God will bring to pass the things that he's spoken over us. He will not destroy or slay a person or a nation that's righteous. We will inherit the promises. We will see our days of life lengthened. We will be rewarded according to our righteousness. We'll be shown great mercy It'll be given to you according to your righteousness. He doesn't withdraw his eyes from the righteous. Favor will surround you like a shield. He'll establish you and make you stable. The enemies will turn back. He'll defeat your enemies and destroy it. He loves the righteousness. And he will, those that are righteous will abide in his tabernacle and dwell in his holy hill. You'll awaken his likeness and be satisfied because you're going to become like him. Great reward will come to you as you're keeping the word of righteousness. Blessings and righteousness will come for those that do righteousness at all times. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Ears are heard. He hears their prayers, and he delivers us out of all troubles and all afflictions that come against us. The enemy will not rejoice over us. He'll come and destroy the works of the enemy. That your, your righteousness will cause God to manifest himself, and he'll uphold you. You'll possess your inheritance. You'll be satisfied. You won't be ashamed before your enemies. You'll inherit the earth. You won't be forsaken. You won't be begging bread. You'll be saved. You'll be a strength in time of trouble. Tremendous blessings. You'll ride prosperously. You won't be moved. You're going to flourish, have abundance of peace. You're going to be exalted. You're going to see peace and be set in the steps of his way. God will cause you to flourish like the palm tree. You're going to grow up like the cedar. He's going to be your defense and your rock of refuge. He's going to bring judgment against all your enemies. He's going to cause you to be blessed with wealth and riches in your house. You're not going to be moved. You're going to, he's going to bring his righteous judgments on your behalf. And you're going to be blessed as the habitation of the just. Your path's going to shine clearly more and more to the perfect day. You're going to be delivered from death. Your soul won't famish. Blessings will be upon your head. Your remembrance will be blessed. Your desires will be granted. You'll have gladness of heart. You'll never be moved. You'll be delivered from death. You'll be directed in the way the Lord has. You will be delivered out of trouble through the knowledge of God. You'll see life. You'll be delivered from any punishments. As God will deliver you as you're walking righteous. You're going to flourish. You're going to be a tree of life. You're going to be recompensed in the earth. You're not going to be moved. Your spiritual house will stand. You'll come out of trouble. And remember that promise that says no evil happens to the just. That's a tremendous promise. 
He'll bring life. He'll guard and watch over you. Good will be repaid. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Only the just, the righteous, are going to get it in these end times. You'll have hope. You'll have the exalted and much treasure. God will love you. Here's your prayer. Safe, protected. Your children will be blessed after you if they'll walk in the way of righteousness. You'll find life and righteousness and honor. You'll eat the fruit of your doings instead of the enemy eating up and destroying the work of your hands. It'll be well with you. You're going to be fruitful and have peace and quietness and assurance. You're going to dwell on high. You're going to see the king. You're going to have a revelation of him. You're going to see the promises and be defended. Your needs will met. You'll be blessed. You'll be upheld with his right hand. God will bring forth his peace like a river and his righteousness like waves of the sea. You'll be far from terror, fear, and oppression. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He's going to hold you up and support you. You're going to be inheriting the land. God will meet with you. It'll be well with you. He'll deliver your soul in the midst of judgment. You'll live. You'll shine as the brightness of the firmament. You'll, you re, you'll reap mercy and righteousness will be rained on you. He'll be your God. You'll have, see healing. You'll grow up strong and mighty and you'll tread the wicked underfoot. What a tremendous list of blessings and results from walking in righteousness. We don't want to ever look at the ones from the wickedness because that, that's all nothing but destruction. Make sure you're walking righteous before the Lord. Say this to me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all the rewards and the blessings, the results that will come forth as I'm walking in righteousness. I thank you. I'm born again. I thank you for the word of God, the word of righteousness. I am ordering my life after the way of the Lord. I will walk in righteousness and I will see these blessings coming upon me. Thank you, Lord. As I walk in righteousness, I take hold of all of these promises, and I thank you for bringing them to pass in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Great blessings. We've got a lot to talk about yet. We're going to talk about the New Testament ones, and then we're going to also be talking about how we, can, we are to deal with iniquity and unrighteousness and lawlessness and overcome it, because that's going to come in the last days. And you've got to be ready to walk up and to deal successfully with all lawlessness or unrighteousness that will come against you. You've got to get it cut off in your life so you do not get pulled into it because the deceivableness of unrighteousness, it says, is going to deceive the multitude that are going to fall away in the last days because they're not walking right. See, you can't, just, you can't be on the fence. You're either with God or you're going to be in the deceived company that's going to be in trouble. That's why we have made our decision. You make your decision. We are walking in the ways of the Word. Father, I thank you and praise you for all that you brought forth. Thank you that we're going to walk as righteous in all that we do. Thank you for your great blessings that are coming upon us and will continue to come upon us. And we know your eyes are upon us. You love us because we walk in righteousness. Thank you that we will make sure we're walking in righteousness all the days of our life and we will see your great blessings. Thank you. There will be much fruit. So we hear and do your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.